Hey, this is Casey with Voodoo Rods, and I'm gonna do a little, uh, a little marbling demo uh, on how I do it. Uh, hear a lot of people asking questions about what's the right way uh, to do marbling, and there is no right way. Um, this is a kind of a technique I played with for a while. I like how it looks, and uh, gonna show how I kind of do it. So uh, take what you can from it. Uh, and develop your own style because um, every time you do a marbling job, it's always unique. So uh, right now I have just an old broken rod I'm going to do, do this demo on. Uh, I normally do a, a, a base thread. I like to do black. Uh, you can do other colors. I've done metallics. Um, you know, you can do some, some nylons, no color preserver, uh, you know, suggested, but... Uh, but I like to do black. It makes a nice background. You have a lot of colors over the top of it. And just that little peak of black at the bottom uh, gives it some really good contrast. So this is kind of my, my normal way. Uh, first thing you need to do, I have some epoxy mixed up, is we're going to coat this really, really thin. All this is is to get it wet to get the colors a base to lay on. So I'm literally just painting it on. You have so much epoxy that's going to be on the top of this. What it looks like really doesn't matter. Um, but this method I'm doing is really not a ton of epoxy. I'm putting on very, very stringy, thin layers. So I'm not really building up that much. Which is, which is why I like kind of this little technique that, I'm, that I do. So there we have it pretty, pretty wet. You get a little bit of bubbles cause I painted on, but it, it really doesn't matter too, too much, but I want to get the big ones out and we'll, we'll get some out later if they pop up, but they normally don't pop up too often. So in, in this way, I have, I have colors mixed up for the sake of time. Uh, first color I'm putting out is, is Blue Dragon, uh, one of our metallics. And it is, I've mixed it with epoxy with no additives, no mud. So it's pretty, it's pretty runny. Because uh, this base layer, I want to get a, just a, a, a nice wavy, water looking type of background. So I have just a old plastic bristle brush I cut the tip off to make it a little stiffer uh, I find I get a little better application by doing that and all I'm doing here it's gonna move around in marble I'm just kind of getting it down in a kind of random pattern just to give it a background for my other colors And you can go as heavy, like I want this black to really pop out in the back, so I'm not going to cover it. And because there's no additives, there's no mud or anything in it, and I'll explain the mud in a little bit, but it, it's, it's pretty runny. So this will kind of marble around as it dries, or as it rotates. So you get a nice little, little look. All the brush strokes will go away as it settles. And I'm mainly looking for spots that look like a blob, like I put it down and I'm kind of spreading them out. And again, this is my, my background, so. All right, happy with that. Now this color is sundown. I'm, I'm mainly using it because it's really, really bright and it's gonna show up really well on camera. Um, I've never really done this combination before, so we'll check it out. I think it's gonna look pretty cool. So here's the epoxy mix, but this time I added mud. This is the additive we sell. 
um, um, called mud and you add about um, real, I'll, I'll mix them up in a little bit my last color but you're really adding I have about uh, a cc and a half two cc's of epoxy in there you're really gonna add about this much um, to get it pretty stiff and what the mud does is it stiffens up the epoxy and I want it pretty stringy for the technique I'm doing you can see it right here and this allows the colors won't mix this orange is going to sit on top of the blue and it won't uh, swirl around with it it's going to pretty much stay exactly where I put it which is what I which is what I want so in the technique I like to do I want it pretty stringy and I'm putting it on pretty thin very very random uh, I'm almost embarrassed about how easy this is and, and how great of a result it does with not much effort. But so I'm getting this nice and pretty stringy. Let it thin out. And I'm just randomly laying down my color. Now you do have to be a little kind of careful on how you do if you want it to be pretty even. Um, but where is not as important as this as just the spacing trying to fill in the areas And I really really like this kind of crazy lightning bolt Look it just speaks to me. I love it So I do it a good bit when I do marbling jobs When this dries, it looks really, really cool. So you can see how fine and stringy I can do this with the mud and create some, there's a spot right there. And I normally like to do my colors dark to light, uh, except I'll always go over the top with black. Um, just because it, I just find it, it just kind of caps it off. So there's our orange, I'm liking the way that's looking. Uh, next color I have is Snow White. It's just a, just a plain white. Again, I got this really, really stringy. Letting it dry out so it's not too thick. And I'm just kind of getting this on as an accent. You know, my, my theme for, for this, you know, like if I had um, guide colors, I may have blue guides with, you know, kind of white and orange uh, trim bands or something like that. Would really tie it all together. Again, I'm not looking for... In, in the way I like it, I'm not looking for really, really thick lines. I'm looking for really, really fine, thin lines, just accenting the blue. And looking for open spots where there's a ton of blue coming and I'll fill it in. And a little area right there. All right. And you can always tell when you're doing this that maybe you know add another color or something like a silver would really be cool, but so the last one I'm gonna mix to show you just kind of how, how to normally mix epoxy. So I have uh, what's left over my cup from pouring everything out and putting my, my base coat on. And I'm gonna, this is jet black. This is my black. I like to do this as an accent. You don't need a ton of color in, in there. We normally send a little scoops when we send out the pigments, but you can just use sticks or whatever. So I'm mixing it up and you can see it's still pretty runny. And if you want a, a true marbled look, put it on like this. It'll all blend together as the rod turns. 
um, they'll they'll kind of swirl together, change the direction of your uh, uh, um, of your wrapper, and it'll swirl back the other way, and 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 you know it's not a constant swirl all the way around, and you can keep doing that back and forth, and it'll make a nice look. So there's black, and you can see it's it's pretty you know epoxy like, pretty runny. So we're gonna add the mud to that. And I'll show you what that does. Now there's a good there's a good bit of epoxy in here, so I'm gonna add a little bit more, a bit more mud because I want the black really really stringy uh, for my accent. So I, I have a good bit, which may be too much. Now the mud does change the color a little bit, but don't worry about that. It's gonna go right back to basic black. It'll it'll look a little gray, or my colors may not be as as bright uh, when you add the mud, but. As it dries, it goes right back to its original color. And you can see how it's starting to form up and get really, really stringy, which is what I want. Now you could put this on really thick if you wanted really thick lines, but I'm looking for just a, just a basic accent and I want it very, very stringy. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and add the black. And you can see I'm letting it draw out to really, really thin. And I don't want this to show, I just like the way the black kind of cuts across the colors. Really, really fine. It just, to me, just finishes it off. Um, especially if I have a black background. There's a good one, we can do some work with that one. And I've done the first coat where, like, I, like we did the blue, and it was very, very runny. And I, I would do like a green side by side with it, and fill in some spots with the green if I want to look like water or something like that. And then put these color, put just like a, just a white over it um, to make it look like a, you know, like a foam or something like that on the water. It's hard to tell now, but once this dries, all those. All those colors will be separate, 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 and they'll flatten out a little bit. You can start to see the, the orange kind of start to do that a little bit. It'll start to flatten out and really make a really nice look. So that'll be the finished product. And I'll hit it with a little heat. Get any bubbles in there that may have formed. And we'll let this dry. And this would be a, a killer split if this was a customer's rod. One major tip I could tell if you're marbling, try to marble in, if you have grips on first, marble to a certain spot and don't marble all the way up to the wine and checks. So I see, you know, pictures of people have marbling running over to the grips you know, marble up to up to a certain point, about a quarter inch or whatever before, and then put your trim bands on the end. Once you finish this off with thread, it makes a clean, clean transition. That that thread cutting across the colors looks so sharp. So that that's kind of my one main suggestion that I, that I see when people marbling that they they tend to marble from end to end. Stop it short and finish it off. Even if it's just black and you want to put whatever, just stop it short and put your trim bands. Man, it makes such a such a really clean transition so that's it this is uh voodoo rods technique on on how i like to marble again this is not the right way but this is my way thanks a lot hope this helped